Welcome to another episode of Rob's World of Boxing. Let's get it. Alright. This is a fight night recap video. Um, from last night, April 9th, 2022. Alright. <coughs> it was a few different fight cards. So let's waste no time and dive right into it. Alright. Uh, the first card I'm going to talk about is the Michaela Mayer versus Jennifer Hahn. Michaela Mayer versus Jennifer Hahn card. Uh, on their undercard, uh, well, the fight transpired in um, Costa Mesa, California. Uh, what well, a card transpired in Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa, California. It was an ESPN card. That it, it came on at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And um, the first fight that I tuned into was... Uh, Duke Reagan versus um, his opponent. Duke Reagan was a uh, a 2020 Olympian. I think he finished. Um, he was a silver medalist in the 2020 Olympics, Tokyo. Uh, he was fighting a guy who was 15 to 21 with five draws. Uh, Duke Reagan. Uh, it was his first time fighting since the passing of his father, actually. Uh, who's you know been his. Uh, Number one supporter in the in the in the world of boxing and probably in the world and you know in life in general since his father, and um so I guess he needed some time. Well, of course he needed some time off for that from that. So this is his first fight since fight you know since his father's death and um Duke man he did what he was supposed to do man he put he put the guy away. Duke is a smooth puncher. He was uh well a smooth boxer. He was in there um. Uh, Jabbing appropriately, he was jabbing um, with levels. He was jabbing up to the top. He was jabbing at the, you know, down to the body. He uh, he was boxing. He, he he's a good athlete in there. Uh, overall, he's a good looking prospect. It was a unanimous decision win for uh, Duke Reagan. All uh, three judges, all three judges on having uh, sixty to fifty four on the scorecards uh, for your winner, Duke Reagan. Uh, he advances to five and zero. Oh. Well, one KO. Um, all right. Let's get to the next fight on the card um, that I saw. Um, Blake Katana versus Floyd Diaz. Blake Katana was four and one uh, with one KO, and uh, Floyd Diaz was three and zero with no KOs. Uh, Floyd Diaz, he's uh, he was looking good, man. He had natural in there, man. He. he He's a great, well, he was a good looking athlete as uh, Duke Reagan. Um, he ended up finishing his opponent. His opponent wasn't a world beater um, with a body shot in the fourth round. Um, it looked like, uh, you know, it was, it's levels to this shit. It was on, you know, Blake Atana ain't more of a, he was on the amateur level. Uh, Floyd Diaz came. He looking like a professional. He got rid of him real quick um, and did what he was supposed to do, man. Uh, his nickname is Cash Flow, man. And, um, uh, yeah, man, his cash gonna be flowing, man. He keep putting up performances like this. Good job, Floyd Diaz. He advances to four and zero with one KO. His first KO of his career. Good job. Um, uh, all right. Now we can get into this um this main event that transpired last night on ESPN. Uh, Michaela Mayer versus Jennifer Hahn. Um, it was at 130 pounds, junior lightweight. If you didn't know, um, it was a 10 round contest. Um, Michaela Mayer, man, she made easy work of Jennifer Hahn. Um, like I said, it's levels, man. She's an IBF and WBO uh, women's world champ at uh, 130 pounds. Um, she wants to unify 130 pounds after this fight, after she, you know, beat Jennifer Hahn the way she beat Jennifer Hahn. You know, she's looking for stiffer competition, so she wants to unify. She wants to go after the other two champions at 130 pounds. And if she can't secure those fights, she's looking to move up and fight the winner of, uh, move up to 135 pounds, that is, um, and fight the winner of um, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. 
Um, I think that fight transpired June. It's going to transpire June. Th I mean, April 30th. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, man, I feel like, uh, I feel like that's the way to go, man. Even if I don't feel like she should unify 130. I mean, if that's something she want to do, you know, more power to you. But, uh, you know, women need big fights, you know, to put the women boxing on the map. So I feel like uh, the winner of Katie Taylor, uh, Amanda Serrano, will be a great fight for her and a great fight for women's boxing. So I want to see that fight happen. Uh, yeah, man. But nonetheless, good job, Michaela Mayer. Uh, shit, man. Uh, good job, everybody on the card. It was a um, couple. It was a couple um, fights before the McKellen Mayor card and after, you know, the the Duke Reagan and the Floyd Diaz fight. But uh, I really wasn't too interested in them. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so I, you know, I didn't even talk about it. But yeah, uh, let's get into the Dazon card, man. Uh, the Dazon. Uh, it was the Ryan Garcia. It was, it was actually the Ryan Garcia card. Uh, it transpired that it came on at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on the undercard or co-main, whatever you want to call it, uh, it was a 10-round contest between Shane Mosley Jr. and Gabe Rosado uh, at 168 pounds. Uh, shit, man. Gabe, uh, Shane Mosley Jr., man, he looked good in this fight. In his last fight, he looked good um, until the second half when he started to tail off, I guess, from fatigue or whatever the case may be. I thought it was a lack of focus. And uh, this fight, he uh, maintained his focus throughout the fight. And um, yeah, man, it was a, um, it was a, it looked like it was a very fulfilling win for him. He was, uh, he was juiced, you know, after the fight, man. And I, uh, I seen a lot of, you know, progression in this fight from Shane Mosley Jr. Uh, like I said, he uh, made he looked good early on. Um, he was doing a good job of boxing throughout the fight, um, and he, like I said, he maintained his focus. He didn't have any mental lapses in there, and you know, uh, drop his defense or you know anything stupid or anything you know out you know that uh, you know give Gabe some confidence. He did what he was supposed to do and got Gabe Rosado out of there, man. Uh, it was a majority decision win for Shane Mosley Jr. Uh, one judge having a 97-93, uh, another one, another having a 98-92, and a final judge having a 95-95. A majority decision win for your winner, Shane Mosley Jr. Good job, uh, younger Shane. Uh, like I said, I want to see more out of Shane Mosley Jr. Now, at first I, I had kind of gave up on him, but I, you know, throw him in there with another uh, cool little 168 pounder. It looked like he uh, might have found his uh, his his rhythm and his flow. And uh, yeah, man, I want to see. Him. But uh, all right, let's get to the main event on that court. Uh, it was at 135 pounds, lightweight. If you didn't know, uh, it was a 12 round contest between Ryan Garcia. And uh, his opponent, Emmanuel to go. Ryan Garcia was 20, 21 and 0 with 18 KOs. Emmanuel to go was 32 and 1 with 15 KOs. Uh, hold on, let's fire. Uh, Ryan, Ryan came out aggressive as fuck. He was stalking uh to go, uh, trying to. Get him to go, I guess. Uh, <laughs> he had to catch that. Uh, but his chin was in the air, man. I, uh, you know, I, this this has been a flaw of Ryan Garcia. He has his chin, like, just stuck in the air. And he's a taller guy for 135 pounds. I just don't know why he don't, you know, he don't tuck his chin. And he has his hands down with your chin in the air. Just not a good look, man. You fight a, you know, a, 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 a more skilled opponent. And uh, mm, you might be going to sleep in front of a lot of people. You need to correct that. Uh, but yeah, man. Other than that, man. Uh, Garcia, he looked it. He looked it like he was coming off of a layoff of a year, man. He looked it like, uh, you know, he needed to get his feet back wet in there, and he needed to, uh, you know, he needed to tight. He needed to tighten up some things. He was getting caught 
with um some shit from to go i feel like to go he was a scared fighter he was just in there running those fighters are dangerous but i feel like garcia you know it's levels man you could have got that man out of there you approach you know in my opinion you were supposed to get him out of there the fight was boring as hell um uh, yeah man i feel like man uh ron garcia man uh good comeback win man but uh yeah man i, I expect more out of you i want to see more out of you you know, um, but like I said, he was coming off of a year layoff. So, um, yeah, man, I'm going to give him a pass, man. Your next fight, though, man, no pass, especially the way you talk. He was talking about Javante Davis not getting Isaac Pitbull Cruz out of there and all this other shit, boy. Come on, boy. <laughs> you better cut it out. Uh, but, yeah, man, it was a unanimous decision win for Ryan Garcia. I didn't score the fight. There was no need to score the fight. I ain't even going to lie. I barely watched the fight. I had uh, the Ryan Garcia fight on one TV, and I had the Sebastian from Door and um, Erickson Lubin fight, which I'm going to get into a, a little later in the video on another uh, TV. And, I man, I, I bet I was watching that Ryan Garcia shit. I ain't going to lie to you. But um, it was a unanimous decision win for Ryan Garcia. Um, Two judges having it 119, 108, and the th third judge having it 118 to 109 for your winner, Ryan King Rye Garcia. Stand up, Victorville. <laughs> hey, uh, all right, let's get into the uh, the card that transpired last night on Showtime. Uh, it was the uh, Sebastian Front Door and Eric Lubin card. But let's get into that co-main, um, which was Tony Harrison uh, versus Sergio Garcia. Tony Harrison was 28-3 with one draw, 21 KOs. Um, Sergio Garcia was 33-1 with 14 KOs. Um, um, let me, Sergio Garcia, he was uh, coming off of, of his last fight was against Fundor, Sebastian Fundor, who was in the main event la uh, last night. And that's where he suffered his first defeat. He gave um, uh, Sebastian Fundora a good-ass fight, man. It went to the cards. It was a good-ass fight. But uh, and I thought he was going to do the same with Tony Harrison. Uh, he's a come-forward fighter, pressure fighter, man. But Tony Harrison was picking him apart all night, man. I ain't going to lie. It was the best performance I've seen from Tony Harrison, man. Uh, Tony Harrison's father recently, has pa recently just passed. Um, I feel like, um, you know... Sorry, you know, sorry for your loss too, Tony. Uh, but I feel like that lit a fire under him, man. I feel like he trying to put on for his dad and, you know, just, man, man, man. That, this was the best, like I said, this was the best performance I've seen from Tony Harrison, man. He did a great job boxing out there. Um, he did a, he brilliant, he did a brilliant job of counter punching. He was setting brilliant traps and um, counter punching tremendously. Um, he was working off his jab. He was, he, man, he was throwing combinations. He was doing everything well. Uh, and his mom, man, I heard his mom from, I was, I know he heard her because I was hearing her from, you know, watching it on TV. She yelling, uh, jab, Tony, stay in the middle of the ring, get off the ropes. I'm like, she telling him everything right. This woman is a knowledge, knowledgeable as fucking boxer. She's a boxing guru. Get her in the corner. I'm like, man. But, uh, shit, man. Like I said, man. Nonetheless, man, it was a great fight from both fighters, man. Um, Sergio Garcia, just like I said, just levels, man. It's levels, man. And, um, but I don't know. Like I said, he gave Fandora a hell of a fight. I guess styles make fights, man. Because... Tony picked him apart and counterpunched him all day. He was coming in so aggressively. He was pushing the action, but he wasn't really landing nothing effective. Tony was Tony was landing the the, the more effective punches all night. Uh, good job, Tony Harrison, man. Good good fucking win. Uh, it was a unanimous decision win for um, Harrison. All three judges having it, you know, for him. That's a unanimous decision. Um, one judge having it um, 98 90, 92, and the other two judges having it 100 to 90. A clean sweep for Tony Harris. Good job, Tom. <laughs> hey, but, uh, all right, let's get into that main event. The main event on that card 
Man, and it was a good one. Um, it was a 12 round contest at 154 pounds. Just was just as the Tony Harrison fight was, 154 pounds. Man, this motherfucker was good. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, it was between Sebastian Fundor and Erickson um, Hammer Lubin. Um, Fundor was 18 and 0 with one draw, 12 KOs. Lubin was 24 and 1 with 17 KOs. Man, oh man, oh yeah, I'm for sure for this or that. That shit, it went down, people. If you missed it, you missed the fight of the year. In my opinion, the year's still early, man, but I, man, it's got to be a hell of a fight to beat it, man. Oh my God. All right, man, let's waste no time. Let's get into it, man. Uh, in the second round, man, it, start, it started off good, man. It started off with fireworks, man. In the second round, Lubin went down from an up. Well, Lubin got hit with an uppercut at first, man, that wobbled him. I'm like, oh, they said, Lubin, you got to watch that uppercut. And that was the story of the night. That all night, he was getting called that uppercut. Oh, my God. That nigga just need, I'm sorry, Lubin, he just need to practice on blocking the uppercut. Boy, if you just block an uppercut, you, man. You'll be good in your career. That's what Charlo put you down from that uppercut. And he was beating the fuck out. Sebastian was beating the fuck out your chin all last night with that uppercut, man. Practice that. Practice on blocking the uppercut. But, um, yeah, man, in the second round, he got rocked from the uppercut. Then later in that round, he went down from the uppercut. It was a nasty knockdown three. Just went down. He got hit. He, fuck it. Uh, but, uh, the next round, Lubin came out, man. He was looking, he, st he was looking good. I ain't gonna lie. I thought he was over after he got dropped, but he came back showing balls and heart, number balls and heart. Fucking, um, uh, he looked good. The third round, man. I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking like, this is a good ass fight. This is a good ass fight. Shit. Fuck it. Uh, it was a back and forth contest. I didn't score it, man. I, I like I said, it was hella fight song. The Ryan Garcia fight was right here. This little, I'm like, man, I'm on this Lubin fight, man. But I, you, you know, but uh, it was a good ass fight, man. Lubin actually <coughs> <coughs> was taking a beat, man, in the seventh round, and I'm like, damn, man, they might stop this any minute. Man, Lubin need to show me something. <coughs> as soon as I was thinking that that nigga Lubin hit, he <coughs> he like got a spurt of energy and start. He threw us like a three or four punch combination and uh, he floored uh, Fundor. Fundor said he was you know getting caught with some heavy shit and he just felt like he needed to take a knee at that time so he didn't get caught with nothing you know detrimental that was gonna end the night for him. So um, he took a knee. But, um, man, Lubin was catching him with some shit. And I felt like uh, I, <laughs> I jumped up. I was just, I'm like, nigga, go, nigga, go. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I'm I, like, I thought Lubin was going to pull it out at that moment. But uh, next round, man, Sebastian Fandori came back. He got on his feet. Uh, he was doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, the story of the night, man, was basically Fandora wanted to fight on the inside and throw value, you know, throw, you know, throw a lot of punches. And um he didn't he didn't like when Lubin was well boxing, funny as it sounds, because he's tall as hell. You would think that he'll want to be on the outside, but that wasn't the case. He likes to fight on the inside. And when Lubin would fight on the outside and boxing and you know, just keep his defense tight, he was doing good against Fandor. Um all three judges haven't had Lubin winning the fight. Um, uh, fucking, um, uh, but he, he wasn't, he wasn't, he would not keep his defense tight. His coach, Kevin Cunningham, he was telling him all the right things in the corner, man. He was telling him, keep your defense tight. Just, uh, box this guy. Stay on the outside. He wants you to get on the inside. He wants you to start trading with him. He was telling him all the right things, but like, Lubin just was not listening, man. He wasn't listening, but, um, uh, like I said, he showed a lot of heart, man. It was a ball measuring contest, I guess, for, for both fighters, man. And uh guess we saw who balls was the bigger, the biggest, man. No homo, man. Shit. Uh like I said, man, after the um after the seventh round and going down, 
Fandor came back in the eighth round and rebounded nicely. Mm-mm. Yeah, man, in the ninth round, he ended up uh, beating the hell out of Lubin. Some more hitting him with a lot of uppercuts, a lot of uppercuts. Like I said, story tonight, he was hammering him with uppercuts, no pun intended. But, uh, yeah, man, he ended up, uh, Kevin Cunningham ended up stopping the fight, man, after the ninth round, which I felt like was an amazing stoppage, man, from your corner, man. If your corner loved you, man, it was an amazing stoppage, man. If you see Erickson Lubin's face, man, that boy looked like Martin, boy, when he was in there with Tommy Hearns. I'm no lie, no exaggeration. That boy's face was gruesome. I'm yeah, man, it was a great stoppage from Kevin Cunningham, nonetheless. I'm not going to argue with it, but when uh, when he stopped the fight, he like I said, Lubin was up on all three judges' scorecards. Uh, man, it was a great fight, man. This was fight of the year, man. Lubin, you ain't got nothing to ha hang your head about. Uh, you showed heart, man. You wasn't going to quit, man. I seen it. You weren't going to quit. You was going to keep going. Sometimes your corner got to protect you, and that's what happened, man. You need to thank Kevin Cunningham. I, mean, I, don't, I know you're not in that state of mind right now, but your family should thank Kevin Cunningham. And when you get older, I'm pretty sure you'll come, you'll come back and you'll thank Kevin Cunningham for that. There's, there's going to be other opportunities for you to fight for a belt, man, but you only get one life, man. Shit. Good job, man. Kevin Cunningham stopping that fight. Good job, both fighters, man. Uh, for Sebastian Fundora, the sky's the limit, man. Uh, I wasn't putting respect on your name before this fight. I feel like you were just hella tall and skinny, and you when you know you you don't use your advantages enough. I'm standing stand on the outside, but fuck all that, man. I see what you're doing now. You're a good inside fighter. You throw good volume. Uh, yeah, man. I want to see you fight the winner of um, Jermail Charlo, Brian Castano as well, at, like you want to fight him. And you called him out after the fight, and I want to see that fight. Uh, I think Jermail might uh, win it, but uh, you never know, man. You never know. Uh, but nonetheless, man, good fighter. Good good fight, both fighters. And, uh, yeah, man, good shit, man. Uh, but yeah, man, let's get into the, uh, the Triple G. And uh, Ryota Murata fight. Um, it was a card, but the the card came on at 5 a.m. and I, I barely caught that fight, man. But let's get into the fight real quickly. Um, it was a 12 round contest at 160 pounds, uh, middleweight. If you didn't know, uh, Triple G was 41 and one with 36 KOs. Murata was um, 16 and two with 13 KOs. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be real quick. Uh, the fight was close throughout the fight, man, um, until like the sixth round when Triple G started pulling away, uh, which I feel like he, you know, was going to do all night. And uh, he ended up um, getting rid of Murata in the ninth round. He hit him with a right hand, um, which knocked Murata into the ropes. And then um, um, Murata corner eventually ended up stopping the fight um, in that round. Um, I feel like... Uh, Triple G has lost a few steps, man. I feel like he won that first fight against Canelo. Uh, he could have won a second one. You know, that was arguable, you know, arguable. But uh, I feel like uh, this third fight, Canelo might have hurt him, man. Uh, he's lost a lot of steps. He's 40 years old. Um, and, you know, man, I don't want to see that fight. I did want to see it, but now I don't want to see it, man. Triple G, he's, he's a shell of himself, man. But uh, nonetheless, man, good job, man. Uh, everybody I talked about on this video, man, all the fighters, man, like I stated, boxing is a dangerous sport, man. Anybody putting their life on the line in there, man, I, hey, more respect to you. I respect you. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, it was an exciting night of boxing, man, nonetheless, man. But uh, like, comment, subscribe. Rob's World of Boxing, people. Yeah.